Hi, everyone. Susan Gerbeck from Psychics Explained. I have a different psychic for you today. His name is Chris Riley. He was recently featured on a documentary. Um, it was documentary was called. Let me pull it up here. It's under the screen that I'm on right now. Hold on. <laughs> My psychic powers have made 300,000 pounds. That's what it's called the show the documentary company is channel four documentaries the person who did the show on him they interviewed him was a man called where's my notes ben zand z-a-n-d okay so i guess this documentary thing does is it looks at people who have interesting lives and then it it gets in with them and you know follows them around asks a lot of questions and and then they put out a documentary and it's about 19 20 minutes long so it came to my attention i'd never heard of this psychic before he's a uk skeptic i think he's an exit S essex sorry and he has a giant social media following now they call him a celebrity psychic now they're all celebrity psychics uh, in their in their minds. And I, you know, whatever. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give you the links to watch this. I'm not going to include the video on this because I don't want to have to deal with a copyright strike and all that other stuff. So I'm going to give you the links. Hopefully you'll come back to this video. And we will talk about what is going on in this video. So I really want to hear your impressions. Now, there are two videos. One is the 19-minute documentary by Channel 4 Do Documentaries by Ben Zand. And then there is a very brief video. I think it's a minute long. Minute, two minutes long. A minute, 43 seconds to watch. I'll put a link to both of these. The minute 43 second video is um, from a different perspective, something that's a part of this documentary. But one of Chris's assistants is filming with her iPhone or her phone. And Chris has put it up on his channel, his YouTube channel. Like I said, I'll give you a link to this. And in there, it he says, this is what, the, the producers of the show don't want to show you. So in other words, it's the more full reading he gives this one woman. He's talking about her teeth and if she'd just gone to the dentist. And I want to talk about that also. But I'm going to give you links to both of those. So if you're curious, I really hope you will stop this video. Go watch those other two. And then come back and let's have a discussion about this. Because it's very interesting. It's fascinating, right? So, bloop. and you're back. Okay, fantastic. All right, so hopefully you've watched those two videos. <laughs> Otherwise, that was very strange or, um, anyway, I hope you watched those two videos. Let's talk about them now, all right? So, Chris Riley is a psychic medium. He lives in Essex in the UK. He has a, a large social media following, according to the documentary people. He's got over 600,000 followers. He sounds like he works very hard. It is, I can't even imagine what it must be like to have his life. Um, the, they make the claim that he makes over $300,000 pounds. So I looked that up. It's about 380,000 US dollars a year. That's a lot of money. He's got two assistants. They show up on the show. And then he has, he says he has a team of people or he's had a team of readers that handle, the, I guess, like the social media, his, his emails and text messages and so on. Um, he's got, um, he looks like he's doing well. His house is nice, um, not flamboyant. It's not a mansion or anything like that. He said he's had three Range Rovers. That means nothing because you don't know if he's owned them um, and why you've had three but you know it's a nice car we don't know if we don't know if he's really making that kind of money 
I kind of suspect he's doing very well. He, but like I said, he, this man works very hard. I, I can't even imagine him making the amount of money, the tons of money he makes because he's doing um, a large amount of his time is giving readings. And that's so time consuming, especially one-on-one. -on -one. And the readings don't seem to be very expensive. Remember, keep that it's relative expensive to maybe you or to I is maybe very expensive to somebody who's having who's really struggling so um it just kind of depends so I don't really know about the financial stuff he looks like he's doing well um let's talk about some of the other things he does say that he does probably he's probably had over a hundred thousand clients which means this guy is really skilled I mean, there's no way of looking at it any other way. He does tarot, he does psychic readings, he does um, mediumship readings. He is a fast talker. I, I see, think he could come across very charismatically. It looks like he has a very bad relationship with his family. I find it interesting that Ben, that's the guy who's doing the interview, asks him about his, he feels like he had these experiences when he's young and what his family thought, and what his family thinks of him now, and apparently is he's estranged from his family, and they don't believe he's psychic. So that's very interesting. And he has, um, um, he supposedly can sense some cancer in people or health issues, maybe into the cats he has. I don't, I don't really know. That's weird. Okay. Um, you would think that maybe he could benefit people a lot better by, you know, um, telling people if they have cancer or not. Well, I really hope he doesn't because that's that's just like off the plate, weird, okay, and bad and harmful. So what I want to, I think what I want to talk about mainly is the Ben Zand who goes into this as a skeptic. He says, I'm a skeptic and I want to believe this very badly. And how he approached this whole experience with Chris and, and his two assistants. And I think Ben was trying to be as kind as he could be and still challenge Chris. I mean, he was laughing with them and, you know, they had, had meals together and he's very observant. But he asked poignant, poignant questions and Chris absolutely is not used to having people question him. Why Chris decided he wanted to do this, I don't know. I'm I'm sure he thought it was going to make him more famous, but it 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 didn't make him look well, and I'm not sure that it made him look well because of what Ben did or what he said because it it was just just watching everything that happened. It's it's really. You can see how manipulative it is. You can see how he's cold reading, um, how his, it's just, it's just a bunch of gobbledygook that he's saying, you know, it's, 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 there's no um, contemplation, no thought, no theory, nothing scientific. It's just, it's real because people tell me that they're, that, that it's real. And I, I get that some people are saying, does Chris Riley believe he's psychic? I get that. And I'm not really all that interested in if Chris Riley thinks he's psychic or not, because it it's the harm is the harm. Whether Chris is a, is a victim of his of this belief that he's psychic or not. Right. He's doing really well. He's got five beautiful cats very well groomed cats and uh and a nice house in the uk and assistance and um it's i guess taking place at christmas 2023 the video came out about a month ago in late february 2024 i am recording this on the last day of march march 31st 2024 um the Ben asks this really important question. How do we prove to the audience this is real? And that's a fascinating question. It comes right to the, to the um, point. 
how do you prove that this is real? And Chris is like, I don't have to prove it. And that's it. You know, he says, I don't have to prove it. And he says, if he, if he is challenged on it, I guess that um, he says his reputation, he's helped so many people and he's been doing it a long time. That's it. And that is it. So he's really not been challenged much. And you can tell how uncomfortable it makes him to be challenged, which is so strange because you would think you're inviting in a documentary film crew. They're going to talk to you about your life. Of course, they're going to ask you these kinds of hard questions. But it feels like that Chris has been doing this for so long, unchallenged, that he's gotten to an arrogant place where he doesn't believe that he should be challenged or that uh, um, he just has doesn't have the, how do I say this? You know, when you're online a lot and you've been, you have to develop kind of a, a tougher shell because you're going to get a lot of spears and arrows thrown at you metaphorically. And I have a feeling that a lot of his um, assistants have been maybe uh, culling that aside and allowing the praise to come through, but not the criticism. So he hasn't really developed that um, hard outer shell on how to deal with these kinds of um, questions. And as I said, I don't see how Ben could have been any nicer to him without still being firm. I do think that Ben was quite uh, probably unprepared. He talks to Chris French, who is somebody I know. He's um, very well esteemed in uh, UK. And well, actually, he's, he's esteemed all over the, the world. You can find his Wikipedia page, and that's Chris French. And he um, knows his stuff. He's not, well, I guess he knows a lot about psychics and he knows a lot about this world. But it's not his only focus. So um, the information he gave him was really good about cold reading. I would have liked to have seen them have a conversation about um, the sitters. Because that's kind of really where I focus, right? The sitter, the person who's getting the reading, how motivated they are, how um, the evidence that Chris is giving for him being real is that the sitter is saying, that was accurate. I feel better. But really, Ben ignores all that because a medium can't, a psychic medium cannot do what they do without the feedback from the motivated sitter. It's a team effort to make this go well. And as you guys know, who've been listening to the channel for a while, you understand that that motivated sitter giving feedback, giving encouragement to the psychic, um, giving them information as they go, that's imperative. If you sit there stone-faced or you have a skeptical attitude, you're going to end up getting what happened to Ben. Turn off the camera. I don't want you here. I'm feeling challenged. I'm feeling threatened or whatever it is that Chris was doing. So I would like to have gotten into that aspect a little bit because they didn't touch on that at all. In fact, Ben mentioned at least twice that these people feel it's a therapy for them. They feel better. They feel good. They feel um, uh, comforted after the reading with Chris. And damn it, you know, we have to deal with this. This is not comfort to have somebody or multiple people, he says, have had over a thousand readings from him in a year. Now, this I've listened to this a few times now. And they say a thousand readings in a year. Now, how do you have a thousand readings in a year when there's only, you know, less than 400 days in a year? So that's not healthy. Not at all. And if he's got a waiting list that's, I don't know, they're making it sound like he's got a year's uh, waiting list. How do you get in and have readings that often? I mean, is he just making up stuff? Or does he have some people who are really in serious um, um, grief and or obsessive? And 
have no business probably going to a psychic that often. And that's very manipulative. Also, he's talking about how, um, you know, this long reading, this long wait list that he has and that how, oh, about the um, the people feeling good again. It's not anybody who's in that situation who's in that much grief probably it's not healthy because they're not giving okay when you go to a, th a counselor if you're going to a licensed counselor they're supposed to work out a plan for you to to understand where your trauma is coming from or what needs to be done and then they work out a, a plan to get you out of therapy soon you know five or six times and what they're trying to do is they're trying to teach you coping skills so that you can understand the stress you're under or the uh, the things that need to be done. It's not for them to get a hook into you and to, for you to be coming back weekly for a therapy session for the rest of your life. That's not the goal of a licensed therapist of any kind. They're supposed to teach you mechanisms to to be able to allow you to be able to understand um the how your your thinking process is going how you need to get out of that how you need to have strategies okay so when somebody comes out of these situations and they feel good um as as my friend banachek says he says you know i could give a drug addict some some the drug of their choice and they'll feel good, but that's not helping them, right? They're not learning. They're not, it's just making them, um, it's putting off the inevitable, which is learning to cope yourself, learning how to, to um, move on with your life. And so this idea that people feel good afterwards, well, yeah, you feel good afterwards. Probably somebody's just had a really nice session with you. You, you, you've been the, um, they're full of, you've gotten their full attention. They are talking about you. So it always feels good to have somebody just talking, you know, looking you in the eye and talking to you, asking you questions. And the psychic, uh, Chris did ask a lot of questions. So let's, let's just briefly mention just a few other things. So we only saw what we saw. It was 20 minutes and it was so basic cold reading that it was, almost embarrassing it really was um i i mean really i mean some of the things i threw out there were a sue or susan health issues heart um close connection or disconnection with your dad isn't that both Ho close connection and a disconnection with your dad um is he one of three and um Oh, he said that he had spent the day with him and it was standard British names that were thrown out and that he was never really specific with the people and and so on. So I just felt like, um, you know, have you gone to the dentist lately? Is it the tooth over there on the side? I mean, it, standard cold reading. So whenever he mentioned his mother, remember when he's sitting on the couch, and Ben sitting on the couch with his shoes off and they're sitting there and he says, so who is, is it Joan? Jane, Jane, who's Jane? He says, well, that's my mom. Okay. We all know that standard cold reading, right? You throw out a name and say, who is it? And then the motivated sitter gives you the answer instead of saying your mother, Jane is come is there's some information about your mother, Jane. Instead of saying, um, there's a Sue and she's, she's your, she was a neighbor of your family um, back in the day, whenever your parents lived on uh, Vermont street back, you know, back in uh, 1979, you remember her? She's the one that had that cat named Josie. No, it's never anything specific like that. It's who is Sue? And then the motivated sitter says, searches in their brain for somebody named Sue. Who is Steve? Who is John? Who is Philip? Whatever. And then they're just throwing out common names. 
Um, so it's never anything really specific like that. It's just so blatantly cold reading. But again, they ignored in this documentary the motivated sitters and how they make this happen. Um, the other thing I was going to say about the father, what was it about the father? Well, I was waiting for him to get some names of his, his uh, grandmother. What Didn't he say she was Iranian? And he handed her the photo of the Iranian grandmother. And you're waiting. I'm waiting for the name that's going to come out of that guy's mouth. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> Is he going to come up with an Iranian name for her? No, he just like, I'm out of here. I'm done. Um, and I like the cold reading. I mean, the hot reading thing. He says, well, that wouldn't have been so hard for you to look up. My mom's all over my, my um, social media. So you could have easily have just found out my mom's name is Jane. That's hot reading. And you're thinking, I'm thinking to myself, if he's hot reading, he knows he's fake. He knows he's cheating because you can't hot read and not know you're cheating unless you've kind of bought into some cognitive dissonance saying, oh, I only sometimes need to do it because I have to prove myself. Only sometimes I have to do it. Um, the the ending there where he just acted like a child. He, he, oh, my gosh. Have some backbone, Chris. You know, it's not very adult. You know, throwing him out of there. It made a very bad um, impression on everybody. Um, he wasn't even good, um, a good enough um, communicator to be able to to have smoothed that out. The, no, that was just awful. Okay, so going quickly to the one minute, 43 second video that I hope you watch that's up on Chris Riley Psychic a YouTube channel. I gave you a link. And what it is, is the assistant is filming with her phone one of the readings that was in the documentary and it's a long form and he turns off the comments on that which is really interesting why do you turn off the comments on that chris why why what do you got to hide he puts out there here's the video and here's what um, they don't want you to see here's the stuff you missed and it's just a longer version and he seems to think that he got some hits and that that was some sort of evidence there, there, it was just more cold reading. It was still more bad cold reading. And it says it was his client. So how many times has he read for this person? So whenever he says Steve or whatever he said to her, it could have easily have been somebody he'd already known. Well, it's a common name he threw out. He didn't say, uh, who is Aloysius <laughs> or anything like that? no. He throws out some name that's common like Steve and she says, oh, well, that's so-and-so. And that's not evidence, Chris. So <laughs> these kinds of shows are interesting. They, I think they're, I think they're fascinating. It's awkward and it's awkward to watch because you, you just feel very uncomfortable for the psychic and for the, for the, the person who's asking these questions. It's very awkward. I guess they like that kind of stuff, but I don't think it addressed the issues that we really should have had addressed is that why does he have 600,000 followers on social media? What is it he's, what is going on with in the minds of these people who are following him? How is it he, he's able to perpetuate this when he's just cold reading? It's just obvious. Um, maybe there's some hot reading going on. Maybe, maybe so, maybe because he's had previous uh, client, clients come back. If you get somebody who's coming in, let's say even a hundred times a year, even a hundred times a year, you, you get to know who they are and you're going to be able to tell them, yeah, well, that house that you were supposed to be selling. Okay. Well, here's what I, you know, he already knows that stuff because he just, just had it and you see him taking notes. So a good medium, if they really are want to be um exact exacting you take notes as you go so it helps you keep it clear in your mind who it was that you just talked about and and having them um the notes get into some kind of file so that later if when you're doing a reading for that same person again you can pull it back up 
you know, it's filed by their name, email, phone numbers, or or whatever. They could pull it back up, take a quick look over it again. And then when they meet with that person, they they just go back on with the same reading. That's a form of hot reading. Um, I'm really curious what you guys have to say. I liked this, even though it was awkward, but I doubt he's going to lose any any um, sitters. He's probably got a whole bunch more people trying to um, get an appointment with him because they don't see, they don't understand how Ben says, I really wish it would have been true, but I'm not convinced. There was nothing. It was, it was just, you know, there was nothing there. And that he acted like a child, you know, well, Ben doesn't say that. Um, I I really doubt there's going to be a lot of people whose minds are changed. The people in the comments who are writing under the video for the uh, documentary, they're not kind to Chris. And a few of them are coming in and saying that they've had readings with him and they were awful or he took my money and he didn't give me the reading. You know, they're saying stuff like that. But I, I haven't seen much positive stuff. So those people mostly already had their mind set where it was. And then you've got his believing fans who are only going to see that he was tricked or they didn't edit him favorably or he, you know, he wouldn't um, have, um, you know, they didn't pick the right readings or I've always had really great experiences with him. And of course he's real. He was probably very stressed out or whatever. They're going to make excuses for him. They're not going to change their minds. I, so I'm not really sure who this video was for, who was this documentary for? As I said, it's probably only raised his credibility. He's probably still got more people, um, giving him more money, trying to get into the wait list. Whereas the people who were already didn't like him weren't going to go to him in the first place. I think we need a really good, serious documentary on the mindset of the believers and what is actually going on. Some psychologists probably looking at this. Um, grief counselors probably need to be brought into this. And um, somebody who has a lot more empathy probably to be able to evaluate what's happening but i don't know leave your comments please like and subscribe i really appreciate you being here thank you so much everybody